Hey everybody, remember back in January, it might have been late December, when Kyle Bass was out there get on all the media giving talks and presentations on CNBC and everywhere else he can, telling us that Japan was facing an imminent debt crisis because its debt had reached proportions that, were, uh, that was unsustainable. Yes, at 250% of GDP, Japan's debt was two and a half times that of the United States, and Bass was telling us that Japan will never be able to find the capital and the investors and, yes, the yen to pay back its creditors. He warned that right now uh, Japan's interest expense was reaching 30% of its tax revenues. And soon investors would pull out and we would see Japanese interest rates spike through the roof and there would be a financial collapse of humongous proportions. Well, ever since those pronouncements, guess what? The yield on 10-year Japanese government bonds has dropped another 50 basis points all the way down to 0.52%. And Japan's stock market has skyrocketed. And while the yen did take a tumble for several months, it's now starting to firm up once again. So what happened? By the way, I should add that it wasn't only Kyle Bass that had this view. It was no less than Martin Feldstein, the Harvard professor, who was the former chairman of Ronald Reagan's Council of Economic Advisors. He, too, was telling us that Japan was facing an imminent debt crisis and about to implode. Too much debt. Well, folks, how many times do we have to see the debt doomsday crowd get this completely wrong? I mean, we've seen this over and over and over again. Remember back in 2011 when Standard & Poor's, you know, that wonderful credit rating agency that rated all that toxic subprime mortgage debt as AAA? Well, remember when they warned about a downgrade of the U.S. AAA credit status and then they went ahead and they did that. And we were all sitting around waiting to see if interest rates would spike through the roof. And guess what? Rates fell to new historic all-time lows and investors were buying up bonds like there was no tomorrow. How many times do we have to see this movie before people start to realize that everything these people are saying, everything they have forecasted has been wrong, 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 wrong. The fact of the matter is people like Kyle Bass and Martin Feldstein and Standard & Poor's just absolutely don't understand our modern monetary system, which is the fact that it's fiat money. The government issues its own money, really, by decree. And as long as we're in that system where our currency and our money floats freely, it's not tied to anything or backed by anything like gold or fixed uh, at some fixed exchange rate to somebody else's currency, or as long as our debts are denominated in our own money, then by definition, the government, through the central bank, which for us is the Fed, or for Japan, it's the Bank of Japan, the government is the price setter when it comes to interest rates, pure and simple. And it's not about foreign investors coming in. It's not about the Chinese buying our bonds or perhaps potentially dumping our bonds, which they, they sold a lot of them in recent years, and our interest rates keep going down. It's all about the price that the government sets on its debt that's controlled by the Fed. It's very, very easy for the Fed to manipulate that. And as long as these people keep making these forecasts, there's a tremendous amount of money to be made by investors who go against these ridiculous forecasts that are based on nothing other than a false understanding about how our monetary system works. And you could see, okay, some little hedge fund manager out of Texas, but it goes all the way up to Harvard professors, people like Martin Feldstein and, of course, Carmen Reinhardt, and Ken Rogoff, who I spoke about in prior videos. 
These people just don't understand the distinction between a currency issuing nation and nations that don't issue their own currency, which, by the way, we've heard many of the false analogies between the United States becoming the next Greece or the United States becoming the next Cyprus. And many of those analogies are put out there by these very same people who continue to misunderstand that difference between European countries that use the euro, which no longer have the power to uh, issue their own money, um, or ha you know maybe have decided not to for political reasons, uh, and they have functionally become like states in the United States. I mean, California can go bankrupt. New York can go bankrupt. Texas can go bankrupt. But the federal government cannot. It can always pay its bills and its liabilities as long as they're denominated in its own currency, which is the U.S. dollar, which is what the United States government has the monopoly power to issue. I mean, where else do dollars come from? So getting back to the Japan example, the fear that Japan, and by the way, this doesn't matter if Japan's debt was 200% of GDP, 300% of GDP, or 1,000% of GDP. The ability of Japan to meet its obligations in yen is unquestioned. There is never a difficulty for that nation to do that. It's its own money, okay? So the forecast of a debt implosion, a financial collapse, based on this view, this view of unsustainable, right, unsustainable debt, that's how they keep talking about it, that is never going to happen. And once again, we see in the real world how all these forecasts from the debt doomsday crowd have, it's not even that they haven't come to fruition, they went completely in the opposite direction of what these people were telling us. So maybe, I mean, I'm hoping that one day, forget about these people waking up and smelling the coffee. I hope the media, the clueless media, CNBC, come on. You're out there constantly putting these people on the air who spew this nonsense. I'm hoping maybe, just maybe, one day the media might start to question these people and we could stop seeing them plastered all over our TV screens. That would be a day and a cause for celebration. But let me tell you something. I'm not holding my breath. Anyway, this is Mike Norman saying bye-bye for now. I'll see you next time.